now. Ahead of the 2023 elections, experts warn of the chances of political violence happening if supporters are not called to order. We see a glimpse of that in Lagos when some hoodlums were alleged to have attacked supporters of the presidential candidates of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, during a rally in, on Saturday. The attackers destroyed several buses and other vehicles, leaving many wounded and property what millions of naira destroyed. Obi called on security agencies to protect the fundamental human rights of citizens and encourage Nigerians to shun violence. Wale, this is not good for our election. This is not the right signal. And um, we, everybody is free anywhere in the country to yeah. campaign. And what we saw yesterday, I saw the pictures mm -hmm. of uh, vehicles that were, you know, stoned and yeah. some people that they had their clothes <coughs> because they were when the Labour Party yeah. um, emblem, they had their clothes turned. I think this is a very unfortunate development. We should allow the democratic space to flourish. When we are talking about democracy, it means that um, opinions should be, it's a marketplace of ideas. People should have the right to express their opinions on any issue. And they don't think resorting to violence, you know, we help anyone. However, I think the police needs to do a thorough investigation. Why I'm saying this is that this is not just Lagos. It's also happening in other states. You know, in uh, Yobe states, even within the party, supporters of Lawan were said to be the one responsible for throwing stones at the state governor when he wanted to speak. And in some other parts of the country, even in, I think Ife, Ile Ife in January, some supporters of APC were also attacked, allegedly by members of uh, PDP. So it's not just a new trend. I think, first of all, we need to caution the media the way they report some of these issues. What happened yesterday in Lagos was not an ethnic conflict. Labour Party is not a Yoruba party, neither is APC. You have uh, the two ethnic groups you know, in all the political parties. So what happened was a clash you know, within two political parties. Yet, the police needs to do a thorough investigation. There have been some instances that parties will instigate violence and then play, blame it on others. You know, so the issue of propaganda is also there. I'm not talking about Lagos now, but in other parts of the country. People do it. Members of the same party, they will create chaos and then try to blame it, uh, blame it on the opposition. But I think what happened yesterday, we expect the police to, to, to dig deep because Lagos has always been a state where there is plurality of ideas, you know, over the past hundred years. People, con the ideas contain here. And I think that is the strength of Lagos, which makes it to be a center of excellence when you are talking about democratic politics and when you are talking about you know, sustainable economic development. So anybody who wants to campaign in Lagos, either for Labour Party or APC, should be allowed to, at the end of the day, on voting day, people will decide who is their candidate. So I think we should condemn violence in whatever form. At the same time, police should do thorough investigation so that those that are responsible will be identified you know, and uh, brought to book. Uh, I, I agree <clears throat> absolutely that uh, we can't continue like this. And um, Sarah, for example, says more than 4,000 cases of violent attacks have happened between January 1, 2022 and February 3. What leads to this is intolerance and the kind of rhetoric that politicians are coming up with. We've seen politicians in their videos demanding that political opponents should be attacked. And when you are telling people, telling your supporters to go and attack people, you can be sure that they will carry, uh, carry out such attacks. In the north, it is also rampant. People go to rallies with big clubs because they are expecting that they could be attacked. You see, if you see some of the campaigns from the northwest, for example, you see very big clubs. Mm -hmm you know, held aloft by, by uh, um, uh, party supporters because they don't want to be caught unawares. They know that the possibility of being attacked is, is, uh, is there. So this shouldn't be happening. 
election is not a life and death affair. There is no reason for us to attack anyone. And mm. pe people have the right to belong to parties of their choice. My concern is the fact that across the country, this thing is happening. In some places, you can't even go out publicly. In the East, for example, they are going after politicians, they are killing politicians. So we don't want this election to be signposted by violence. And all the parties need to talk to their supporters, all the leaders of the party need to talk to their supporters. Attacking people is not the way to go. Let the elections come. Let's, let's see who will win Just the election. Democracy. Yes. Oh, not not, not uh, a beating violence. up people, stabbing okay. people all mm. in the name of, uh, mm. of uh, intolerance. And the kind of songs mm. that they sing about even opposition mm. elements. Look at those guys uh, the other day who, who, asked, uh, who, who composed a song deriding Ashwaju. Anybody that is properly bred mm. knows that you are not supposed to ridicule elderly people. Mm. To the point of even uh, composing a song that hand they shake, leg they shake. It's absolute rubbish. Mm. It's only ill-bred people who compose songs to mock people who are older than them. We know their identity. We know, we we know, know. who they are. Yes. But at least people should not show mm. uh, idiosyncrasies that portray that they, are, they, they were not well brought up. Mm. I mean, it shouldn't be happening. You, okay. can't, you can't mock elderly people mm. in the way we are seeing them do through videos, mm. through songs that they are composing on. This sort of things also push people to violence. Yes. Mm. So we'll take this break.